So we're going to move on to the Honoring Identity course, um, which I, we're excited to uh, launch this fall, I believe, right? Uh, yeah. But, but um, Katie's going to lead us through that. Go ahead. Yeah, you're going to be sick of me after this meeting, so no. I apologize, but um, you're going to want to hear about it. It's awesome. Okay, Honoring Identity. Um, so I've got two of the teachers here with me and I'll, I'll bring them up. What I'll do is I'll just kind of um, give a brief overview and then they'll come up and speak to the actual course itself. Um, I just wanna give you a sense of where it came from. And I think that Dustin and Pam did, did present this last year. So I'll be really quick about it. Um, last spring, Dr. Dustin Louie was working with our um, district and he created a survey that um, we gave to indigenous students grades eight to 12 across our district. Um, some of the questions were around identity and belonging, pride, success in school and connections in school. So um, I'll just give you a brief overview of the results. Um, 624 students participated in this survey. Um, I was at PGSS at the time, and I think what's important to note with that, not only that we had the most, but also that we actually, um, we didn't just get it from the students who showed up, who were showing up at school, we actually had laptops and sent our IWs out to um, homes of kids who weren't attending, because oftentimes when we gather information, we gather information from the kids who are already there, and that's fine, we need their information, but we actually need to hear from the students on the margins. So we did do that. Um, and some of the questions we asked, so one of the first questions we asked, asked was, which of the following do you identify as? And the first thing that um, I noticed for sure, and we noticed in the results is that a lot of them didn't know how to identify. Um, they were unsure of the difference between First Nations and Aboriginal, this is Indigenous students. Um, some identified, like 5% identified as Caucasian, and they were Indigenous students. 23% uh, of the students didn't know how to identify. Um, so that was an important thing that we noted in the survey results and watching the surveys take place. Uh, the next question, if you identify as First Nation, which First Nation do you belong to? And um, so what I observed when students were trying to fill this out is they were panicking, calling their parents um, to ask. Not all of them, but there was a, a great deal of them who were trying to figure it out because they actually didn't know um, which communities they were from or which First Nation they belonged to. And so you can see in the answers over 40% said other and they didn't specify. Um, and just under 40% said not applicable. Uh, quite a large number said uh, Clay Lee uh, tonight, but um, that's actually over representation. And I think the reason they did that is because they recognized the name because there's not that amount um, of students who are part of lately, but they recognize the name whether through land acknowledgements, so they just clicked that they were clearly. Uh, and in comparison, um, the survey work was done with School District 91 the, the year previously, and it was a noted difference between students in Prince George. And we had some theories around that. Some of it is because um, we're an urban center, right? And so students are coming from communities, their families have come from the different outside communities that are now living in Prince George and may or may not have, or this would indicate that they've lost some of their connection to community and who they are. Um, another question was, do you feel proud of your Aboriginal ancestry? And so this is on a scale of uh, zero to 100. And so the average was 70. So there was a feeling of pride, 70 out of 100. When asked what has given you pride in your Indigenous culture, um, the most noted answers were um, family and culture, history, family history, cultural events, language, and something that came out um, over 68% of the students identified when they talked about um, pride, they talked about their grandparents, specifically grandmas. So that was um, interesting to note. Um, in the results, when we asked who the adults are that you have connection with, over 60% said teachers. 
um, just over 30% said IWs. Again, in School District 91, it was reversed. Mm -hmm. So more students had connections, Indigenous students had connections with IWs. In our district, it's actually the teachers. When asked what has helped you achieve success in education, over 50% identified something to do with teachers, teachers wanting to help them, teachers caring for them, teachers caring for their well being and their learning. So over 50% teachers were identified as being important in Indigenous students' success in schools or in education. So um, before I move on, if I'm going to kind of summarize um, um, the findings. So there's a large group of Indigenous students at high school who are not confident in how to identify. They um, don't know much about where they come from. A large number of them don't. They do feel pride in being Indigenous. They get a, a sense of pride from learning about their history, learning about their family, learning about language, and learning in general. The people they are most connected to in our district are teachers. And when asked what's helped them be successful in education, it's teachers. So when you put those together, we decided, okay, we need to create a course that teachers teach around um, identity. And um, so we, in the rollout, what I decided to do in September, starting this is I actually went in and interviewed um, 130, like one-on-one -on -one grade eight students, because we decided we'll do it at grade eight. Um, we thought that that was a good age to do that in secondary schools. And so I went in and did one-on-one -on -one interviews just to find out actually from grade eight students, current grade eight students, what do you think about this? What would you like to learn? And so, um, again, very few of them knew the difference between First Nations, Métis, Inuit, Indigenous. They didn't know how to decipher. Um, when asked, do you know much about Indigenous history? All but one said yes, and they identified uh, that they'd been learning about residential schools. And when asked where they learn, they learn in school. So if our current grade eight students, um, when talking about Indigenous identity, identify with residential schools and that's all, that's a problem. And so we need to build on that. Yes, that's an important part, but there is so much more mm -hmm. in identity and indigeneity than just that. And so it's our responsibility to um, provide that for students. When I asked them if we create a course about Indigenous identity, what would you want to learn? And there was a whole list of things. Again, most of them talked about their grandparents. So we need to bring grandparents in and elders in. Um, they want to learn about their specific cultural practices. They want to learn about their own history. A lot of them didn't know about their own history and where they came from. When I asked for the course, would you prefer to have just Indigenous students in, in the classroom mixed? 100% of them said all. All students need to take part. So we're doing this. Um, we have decided to put it in as an elective rotation for grade eights. The Duchess Park and Shasti Kelly Road are doing it as a full course. So it'll be like a four to six week um, rotation that all students will take part in. Um, DB Todd is going to embed it into uh, social studies, into humanities. And what we've done is we've had four meetings, I think, and we've co-constructed the course outline. So with um, Dustin Louie, we've co-constructed the course outline. And in our last meeting, we actually have done some backwards design and we are creating the lessons and listing all of the resources so that the teachers who are teaching this um, have all of the information available to them and there's no guesswork because this is so important to have it planned and um, done properly. So I'll hand it over to two of the lovely teachers from Shasti Kelly Road, Tess Coverdale and Erin Barker, who will give you a little bit more of the content. Was it for us? There you go, Tess, you can. Uh, hello, I am Tess Coverdale, um, teaching up at Shasti Kelly Road um, with the intent of teaching this course starting up next year. Um, well, we've kind of been developing this course. Uh, we really were trying to come up with the idea of how do we teach culture when it's not necessarily our culture? 
right? As settlers who are teaching this course, we felt like we needed to make sure that we were giving the tools, we were giving the probing questions to these students and allowing them to be able to seek this information on their own, right? Uh, with the idea that we are kind of walking alongside them, right? On their journey of discovering what cu their culture is, how they identify, uh, what it means to be that, right? And the cool thing about this course is that is the focus. The content is the students, right? We're not making them learn formulas. We're not making them learn abstract concepts. Instead, they're just focusing on themselves. Who are they and who do they wanna be? How do they wanna express that, right? Um, and so one of the main ideas is the idea of listening to other perspectives, listening to each other, having the chance to hear what their other students are thinking and feeling and who they are. And we we're kind of hoping through that process that they learn commonalities between all of the students and also individual elements within all of the students, right? And learning that, hey, we are different, but in some ways we're so much alike, right? And hopefully that then creates a bond and an appreciation for each other that goes on to those upper grades, right? And so when we're hearing things from the grad coaches and talking about this grade eight year being such a pinnacle year for making them feel like they belong in school, this is giving us that chance for them to talk about themselves and feel wanted and heard by the teachers as well as other students within that school. Uh, my name is Erin Barker. I'm a fourth teacher at Shasti Kelly Road. Um, something that's been very exciting about this course is we have, like, been <coughs> in September, and we have teachers involved from um, our local area, Belmont, Vanderhoop, and our end goal right now, uh, we are continuing to meet just so we can create this accessible content for anybody who may be teaching this course, right? So we are um, ensuring that we allow these kids to have the space to see themselves uh, in relation to the peoples where they are located in the land where they are located. So through our meetings, we've been, as Katie mentioned, developing different uh, lessons or um, activities for students to start the conversation about identity because there's no way in 14 days to 22 days that we can say, at the end of the class, I am, and this, right? We're starting that conversation that they can continue for a lifelong journey. So some of the um, some of the things that we've been coming up with is we'd like to start days with circle, right? But what exactly is circle? How do we approach circle? And through those conversations, I've had that with Carolyn Hoffman, who is one of our IEWs up at Shasti. She introduced us to the resource circle forward, which you see on your screen there. And this is a lovely resource for, for any teacher because it gives them a script on how to even approach what circle is, how circle can be utilized. And it also gives teachers a script for uh, different conversations that you can have in class, even just opening the conversation about identity. And the resource itself also has um, a way to, for these students to explore their own identity with identity wheels um, and identity pyramids where they can kind of visually start to look at what their identity is. They can recognize that they can be uh, belong to multiple communities and multiple identities. They aren't just necessarily one thing. And as we progress to the course, what we'd like to do is have a conversation about stereotypes and busting stereotypes. We um, want to have a activity where it's who I am and who I am not. Right after that tough conversation about stereotypes. Um, with the help of the Indigenous departments, we are hoping to have them access different uh, community elders and knowledge keepers so we can perhaps record some of them so we have access to some of this knowledge and set up like it, it's impossible for Shasti Kelly Road for six times a year to have the same elder come in and have the same presentation. Right, so if we have a uh, series of resources from the Indigenous uh, or from the Clitley, from McLeod Lake, from any knowledge keeper within the area, we can bring that in and then students can build upon the knowledge that they have been gifted there and then find their own connection. Right, so we may have uh, a knowledge keeper in a certain location within Prince George, and this is how they utilize the land, this is what, why it's so special to them. 
And it allows students to, again, open up that conversation about, hey, okay, what's my connection to this land? What's my connection to the space and to these people? And ultimately, by the end of the course, our goal is to have students be able to recognize their own personal connection to the land and to have their own personal connection, uh, their own personal land acknowledgement. So at the beginning of this meeting, we had Trustee Polilo give his personal connection to the land upon advice of Indigenous Superintendent Pam Spooner, right? So we want the students to, to understand it's really their connection to the land and peoples here, right? And that we want to work together, we want to have these students, like I said, open up that conversation with themselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any comments, questions, or are you guys ran away? <laughs> <laughs> I know we're pressed up for, for time. Uh, I know some people have been waiting patiently, but Trustee Warrington, I, I know. I, I, I do, you need, you need to be acknowledged for this work. And, I, and uh, we all need to have this opportunity, this experience. So the experience that you're providing for these grade eights is an experience that I think every single one of us need to, to look deep inside. And you're giving those children an opportunity to know themselves. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have no, I have no other questions. Pam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Masicho, for your time in this work, we know how much effort and time it takes after busy days of teaching as well. And so your allyship in this work, it means a lot to us and it takes all of us to do this. So we appreciate you willing to do this with us. Mm -hmm. So Masi. It's very rewarding, so. <laughs> That's the thing is for us, we get to see the kids, right? We, we have the one-on-one -on -one relationships with the students and we know that this is work that will directly impact them, right? Where it's like, we're thinking, oh, we're thinking of that student, right? We're thinking, oh, if they'd had this connection mm -hmm. early on, how many more steps ahead we could have been, right? So. And the wonderful thing is too, being that at Shasti and Duchess, it is part of the grade eight rotation. We will meet every single student entering in our building, right? And every single student will have this equal opportunity to start the conversation. Yeah, it is, uh, and I know I know it's been in the works for a while, and the board is just well, I'm personally really excited that we're actually going to launch it and do it. And uh, yeah, you're right. I think it's going to have um, a great impact on students and the district uh, entirely. So thank you. And it goes perfectly with our policies that are in creation and coming into play for next year, anti-racism policy and an Indigenous racial reconciliation policy. So it all flows together. Everybody's work here tonight. So again, it, it's huge work. And for opening it up in grade eight too, you have those two years, like up until graduation, having it be a conversation, having it be a part of our school of recognizing our school, like it can only grow. Thank you so much, ladies. Great work.